Hello everyone and welcome to Heroes of the Storm Road to Ranked 1. Uh, this is the second video in my series. I'm Vodnik and uh, this happens to be another Zeratul video. Uh, I do play other heroes other than Zeratul but if you watch my last video I talk about uh, a different Zeratul build, slightly different uh, if I'm facing more ranged heroes which I do happen to do in this game. Uh, I didn't want to upload this video initially because of how badly we stomped the enemy team and it doesn't really show uh, a lot of skill I feel but I figured just for purposes of showing the build I would uh, upload it so we're gonna uh, turn this volume down a little bit because it seems to be a little bit loud and after watching the playback of my last video I noticed that when the fights happen it's a little hard to hear what I'm saying so I figured I would just turn the volume down a little bit so we're gonna see somewhat of the same thing in this game with me doing a lot of ganking early a lot of roaming between lanes uh, initially I did not like the murky pick but he turned out to be a pretty good player he didn't really communicate in the hero select screen but uh... he does pretty well in this game and i'm gonna leave it locked on myself uh... last video i kinda followed the i just tried to follow what was going on a little bit and follow myself mostly but uh... i forgot that it actually in the replay remembers where you put the camera when you were playing so you're kinda gonna you're kinda bleh. If I can speak today, you're kind of going to get a uh, feel for what I'm looking at and what I'm paying attention to. Um, so we're going to get this underway and see what happens. Uh, I'm looking at top here and I see that Sylvanas is probably going to get killed but she just barely gets away and I swoop around seeing that Jaina took way too much minion damage and I'm just going to get an easy gank off here and just blink out really safely, really easily. Uh, I'm going to try, I noticed last video that I used uh, some words a lot, very repetitively, so I'm going to try and not sound very redundant in this video. Another gank mid uh, early. I didn't happen to get this one, but I kind of hang around in mid lane because I think Anubarak might come back out and I might be able to get the kill so I just kind of look down bot see Murky's one on one in right wing and I see Anubarak comes back out he's kind of sitting back but I know he's low enough for me to get him so I get him and then I swoop back in and I think yeah Malfurion gets the kill there I couldn't remember who got it but uh, shrines are up but since I'm low on health I just base and since two of them had just died I figured we could safely get the node still by the time I get back. Uh, so, you know, I looking at the map right now, I know in game, and I'm seeing that Sylvanas is doing fine top lane for the most part, uh, and I'm going to try and come back mid and help them out a little bit. Get that, and here's where I do use the Vorpal Blade upgrade, so let's pause real quick uh, and take a look at what abilities I got this time. So I got the increased uh, increased radius of cleave as opposed to the seasoned marksman which I got last game. Uh, because temples is just not a good map I feel for uh, farming up stacks of seasoned marksmen. And then instead of the focus strike which I got last game I got the vorpal blade because of Brightwing's teleport, Jaina having uh, you know endless amounts of slowing which is really obnoxious. And Vala's Vault uh, helps her a lot in escaping, so I figure get the Vorpal Blade, it'll keep me on my targets. And I'm not entirely sure about this, but I think it gives me a stack of follow-through, which I will still grab at level 7. Uh, because it does say after an ability, it doesn't say hero-specific ability, so I think it does give me a follow-through stack after Vorpal Blade. So, I'm not really losing that much damage, considering... After I use Vorpal Blade, I'll get that 40% after level 7, which in this is 50%, so it's only a 10% difference. Uh, I'm going to keep this going here. 
so I get that gank off on Vala, and I know we're not going to get the rest of mid, so I just kind of clear this minion uh, wave out in mid and soak some experience for my team. Sorry, I'm drinking some coffee here. And then I noticed top that Sylvanas is like struggling hard over here against those uh, minions. So I blink back and I'm going to go top and try and help her out. And I see Jaina going up there as well. I take a peek at mid. Anubarak is by himself. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to solo that kill. So I just try to go top, give them a hand. Sylvanas ended up dying to Jaina. But that's okay because I'm going to pick up this kill here against Jaina and just push we're just going to completely zone them they're not even going to try for it and i'm just going to go mid or top lane rather and uh clear these minions out soak the experience so and we finished off the temple so already you know three minutes in i've already been in all five of my team's kills 100 percent kill participation so that's how you kind of want to be early game for zeratul you want to try and be there for all the kills because otherwise you're just going to be between lanes, not really contributing to the team. And uh, I come down bot for a gank. I know Murky does a pretty decent amount of damage, so I miss my bomb like a pro right there, as you see. And I'm saving my uh, Vorpal Blade and my Blink for if Illidan decides to flip over a minion or something. Not that there was any to do there with, but... And then immediately, on my mount again, back to mid lane. Go for Jaina. Do I get this kill? I think I do, because I use my Vorpal and then I blink away, but I did get a little greedy. I should have just backed off, but it was a one for one trade, so I'll take it there. Uh, and this is when I just start observing what's going on while I'm dead. Where can I go after I resurrect? I see uh, Murky struggling a little bit against Illidan, but he does do a pretty good outplay here uh, against Illidan considering Murky's not that strong early game. Uh, but we'll watch this here. He kind of like zones him a little bit, or kites him rather, and then gets that thing down on the ground and gets it to explode on him. And now he's almost dead. And I'm back down here. And I think he even kills him before I got there. Oh, I just land the last hit. So if this was League of Legends, people would have been pissed. Ah, kill still, blah, blah, blah. So I see Valak swing by, and I blink towards her, knowing I will still have the Vorpal Blade up to teleport her to her if she vaults. So I just aggressively blink, because I know Murky's down there, Anubarak was top, Illidan just died, so I knew I could safely get away with that. I'm sitting here on the node, and I'm like, I need help, because they're going to come swooping down in a minute and spread my cheeks, and it's not going to be fun. So I'm just kind of fighting these guys, hoping that somebody gives me a hand here so I'm not stuck fighting under the turret. Because Zeratul's biggest advantage is his stealth. And if I'm stuck fighting these things holding the temple, I'm not going to have my stealth advantage. So I kind of sit to the side, wait for the stealth, initiate onto Illidan. And I know I can outduel him here, so I just go for the kill and I blink out and go for the uh, healing shrine. Level 10, always get Void Prison. There's not a lot of um, other choices for me. Uh, pick up that Anubarak kill, and then I'm going to try and... And here's something important here I want, want you guys to notice. Look at what I'm doing here. And a lot of people think that this is not important in Heroes of the Storm because of how quote-unquote fast everybody attacks. But I mean, one attack per second, that gives you a whole second to be moving while you're not attacking. So if you're attacking you're moving. I attack and I move. Uh, kind of not a very good example. Right here is a little bit better. I attack and I move. And I attack and I move. And I'm not just, you know, right clicking on them and letting my hero chase after them the whole entire time. I'm trying to stay with them as they're moving away from me because that's one second. You maybe get off two or three more auto attacks because you're keeping up with them as opposed to just right click on them and you let your attacks go off and you throw your abilities. So we see we're in really good control of the game here. We start taking camps early. Uh, probably could have taken it a little bit earlier but usually on this map for whatever reason people start taking them after the second temple. Well the second spawn of the temples. Right back top again. Come in for the gank. I see the Octo grab. Go on to Jaina. 
and then I go on to Vala, and I use my Blink and my Vorpal Blade, and then I Void Prison Anubarak, knowing that there's four of us here, and we can probably get this kill very easily, which we do. Three easy picks, right away. As soon as I came top, everybody followed through. Very good team communication this game, so I was quite happy with that. Uh, back on my mount, I'm seeing what we could do here. We're just going to push this out, and I'm looking at what's going on on the rest of the map. I'm looking at Brightwing, I'm looking at Illidan, and I'm like, okay, let's listen to Malfurion, grab this stuff, get these bruisers, and push in the top lane. After we kept these bruisers, Vala gets way out of position, and I was like, oh, I don't think they're going to get this kill, but she just got dominated somehow. I don't even know. That Sylvanas ultimate did like a whole fuck ton of damage. And then I blink over the wall and finish off Jaina. And then I'm poking at Illidan and fighting him while under turret. And then I'm like, I'm probably going to die here. So I destroy that wall, come out of the fight, and I'm kind of going in and out and trying to poke my damage in just to get him down. And I'm like, okay, there's not much we could do here. Let's just get the temple. Let's kind of back off. Uh, because, you know, we're only going to be able to push her so much until we start running low on mana, we start running low on health. They stay a little bit longer, thinking they could push more. That's fine if they can get away with it. I'm going to grab the free, the free experience at this temple. And some people try to emphasize on, you know, not grouping for objectives and soaking in lanes because, you know, you might be down in experience, but... People sometimes don't realize on this map and on Blackheart's Bay, these two maps specifically, the experience you lose from no longer soaking will be made up if you get a cannon and if you get a temple, because once it blows up a, f a keep or a fort or some turrets, that's free experience right there that you're getting for your whole entire team. And if you happen to get kills in the process trying to capture those objectives, you will easily close that gap uh, if you're behind. So I cap that top temple, and the first thing I do is let me see if I can swoop around back. They're, you know, 3v3 down here, it looks like. Now it's a 4v3. Sylvanas is on the temple by herself. The other team might overcommit into this fight. We might lose one person or so, but you know what? I'm going to see if I can still swoop around. I'm looking at Jaina. She's the squishiest target. Drop onto her really quick. Get that damage. And then I'm looking around. Who do I have here? I tried to get Illidan in this Void Prison, but he happened to be too far away. I didn't throw the ultimate far enough because uh, I didn't want to have to utilize my blink. But it ended up working out because he extends further away from his team and Murky and I happened to take him down. And I blink out of the fight so that Illidan doesn't wreck me because his evasion is fucking retarded. So, that just pisses me off. But they didn't go for a double support comp, which is where Illidan is strongest. I don't know why they didn't. Uh, I feel like... Oops, that's not what I want to do. I feel like that's uh, probably where Illidan is strongest, is if you get two supports, especially if one of them is Lili. Uh, and like... You know, you get a, maybe not even a second support, but like an Anubarak would be very helpful too. And I just go really aggressive here against Jaina, and then I just back off, because I know if I keep chasing, my blink is still down, I already used my Vorpal Blade, and I could get caught out bad, but Murky and I are on the same page, didn't even have to say anything, we both try to go to mid to get Anubarak, and here's where I get a little greedy. I'm on, um... Anubarak, and I used the Vorpal, and then I blink away, but I was like, well, kind of not in a good position here, and I'm like, I'm going to die, so let me just try and get as much damage as I can off on Jaina, or Vala, rather, and uh, try and get that kill, and we end up turning that around because of our lead, really, uh, and getting two kills for one, and almost getting a third and a fourth. So, me just observing the team again. Uh, and this is the camera that happens in game. Like, this is what I'm looking at while I'm playing. So, I'm not really controlling the camera. This is just replay controlled camera based on uh, what I'm looking at when I'm playing. So, I'm just trying to give you guys that kind of sense. So, my team is trying to 4v3 
five here, four v three, four v four actually. And then you know the team resurrects. I saw Ilden was coming up for that four v five advantage, and I'm telling them to back off. Just go for the temple. We can cap it easy. And uh, it's about to be up, and my team sits in the bush like you should. You always want to try and sit in the bush and get a good initiation here. They tried to sit right there, see if they could catch somebody going into the bush, you know, face check it, not throwing an ability in first or anything like that, which Illidan did, and I think Jaina was actually in the front too, but uh, prior, I like that Murky prioritized Illidan with the Octo Grab. He's very easy to kill once he's Octo Grab since he's such a squishy hero, and uh, his survivability in his kit is revolved around using his evasion, using his flips that make him invulnerable and unstoppable for that little uh, window. There's like a couple of frames there where he's not targetable when he flips over you and uh, being able to use his ultimate uh, metamorphosis. I'm sorry. So when he ults he will uh, become untargetable again for about a second or so, a second and a half, and he gets a huge health boost. And then if he has first aid up, so this is all stuff that's built into Illidan's kit to help him survive. So if you have somebody like Murky, or if you feel like, you know, you're in the lower ranks and people, and this is something I notice a lot in the lower ranks, 40s, 30s, and even a little bit in the 20s, uh, people love to go to that double support Illidan and if you feel like man I always struggle against that team that's got an Illidan and two supports have someone who knows what they're doing take a murky and take an ETC and you will shut him down like you will not believe because uh, all you have to do is wait for him to go in have murky drop, drop the octo grab half of his sustain is going to be out the window because he won't be able to use any of his abilities and if you have anybody that does j damage like Jaina or Kael'thas uh, drop the flame strike, drop blizzard, he's gonna die instantaneously. And then you can initiate on the rest of the team with a 5v4 advantage. Uh, and then ETC's Mosh Pit ultimate is just very, very good against Illidan as well because a lot of the time in those lower ranks, he's gonna wanna just jump into your team. Oops, I didn't mean to unpause it. He's just gonna wanna jump into your team. And if ETC plays it right, he waits for. Illidan to jump in and then you just use Mosh Pit. Either you catch him in the stun or he's going to be zoned from his team because he's not going to be able to get around ETC and then you're going to be able to pick off Illidan uh, or should be able to pick him off. But uh, we land the Octo Grab on him and uh, we go in on the rest of the team, get three out of five. We might get the rest of them here. I don't know if uh, Anubarak already used his Burrow. I miss my bombs on Brightwing because the range is just a little too short. But we get a Nubarak, and I uh, go back for the temple while they push because Sylvanas is going to do a lot of pushing power. So it's better if I go back than if Sylvanas was going to go back and uh, capture this temple. So we can get a two for one here. I'll get the temple, they get the base. And I'm just looking at this uh, useless uh, NPC here and thinking, I don't even know why I have to waste my time fighting this thing. I wish they would just remove this part of the mechanic from this map and just make it so that you have to hold the temple, but whatever. It's Blizzard's choice. It's not that serious. Uh, and I'm not even going to bother looking at how my team is doing because I already know we won this game. It was in the bag from like the five minute mark, unless we like seriously threw. So they do die here a little bit, uh, but after I finish capturing the temple, I'm looking top and I'm like, I might be able to save Johanna, I'm not sure, so I'm going up there, letting her know I'm on my way, but I see that Vala shows up and she's probably going to land that extra damage, and you guys are about to see the greatest zero tool play of your life. Are you ready for this, guys? This is going to be intense. Watch specifically to what I do here, because it's very important. So I go in on Jaina, and I I blink, completely missing my bomb, because I'm a, I'm a scrub, and instead of just auto-attacking Vala, I blink in the opposite direction for no reason, and throw my bomb at nobody. This is important, you want to do this. And then, you want to use your Vorpal Blade, even though you're right on top of Vala already, because that's, that's key to uh, 
killing her right here because she's gonna vault away and you wanna have no way to catch up to her right here. And then she's gonna vault and you're gonna chase and a new Barox ultimate is just gonna spread your cheeks a little bit and that's that is how you play Zero Till guys. I was very proud of that play when that happened. So Murky over here being a beast like he is getting that kill because his freaking pufferfish does so much damage if you sit in it. So I'm sorry. That was just I couldn't believe that I pulled that play in the game. I was so upset with myself. I was like, oh, this is an easy two kills and maybe I can get away from a new Barack and then I fucking derp like an idiot. But uh, I see we died a little bit there and I was like, mm, I don't want to throw this game. They're starting to catch up, but I still think we're doing all right. Did I unlock from my camera? No, I guess I just look at nothing for a little while and then realize that they're capturing camps and start moving around the camera. Uh, I don't know what I was doing there. Probably zoned out or something. So they're getting camps. And I'm looking and I'm like, as soon as I see that they captured the um, siege camps over here, I immediately ping, protect that boss because they might be going for it. They know that I'm down. They know that they might be able to do a 5v4 before I get up, before I get in position, and before I get to that boss. So they're going to... They might, might try to go for it. So I immediately ping it, tell my team, look, we got to control this. We don't want to throw the game here. We want to stay in control of the map. They got the siege minions. That means that more than one of them can be over there. The only person we know that's not is a new Barak. But uh, Furion is just as far away, and we don't know where anybody else is. I know Johanna is in the base, so I just want these two to kind of float around here, keep some vision on it, and if they initiate on the boss, we'll know and try to set up for a steal or an engage and then a steal. So I see the siege minions going out and I'm like, okay, go over there. Nobody's over there. I was like, good, that's fine. And then I see Jaina on bot side here and Malfurion is way out of position. I don't know what he was doing. I was trying to tell him that we needed help and he just kind of was nowhere near us. And then he starts heading top by himself and I'm like there's three of us bottom we should just be going bottom and I'm pinging him back but he's still going up and I'm like okay let me see if I can pick up Vala here and here's another great Zeratul play guys uh, I just want you to see this because these are uh, Zeratul plays at their best here when I get a little greedy uh, even though I'm like 30 and 3 I try try to get Vala here but I just fall short because you know shields OP heals OP and all that stuff and we kind of throw this fight right here um, they go in thinking that they're gonna get this kill but forget that Murky only takes like one hit from Jaina and everybody else only takes about three hits from Jaina <laughs> so Johanna probably gets picked off here if I remember correctly and uh, if Malfurion was just with us and grouped with us to go bottom instead of having us engage on this fight for no reason. But uh, they luckily we had, you know, bruisers and siege minions going into their base so they had to go back and defend it and they couldn't just go for the temples. I was telling them to push the core because I thought they might be able to get it uh, just by pushing because Murky does like retarded amounts of damage. but. Uh, probably would have been a bad call. I mean, if it's Murky and he dies, whatever, he's going to be back to life in like three seconds, so it doesn't even matter. But, uh, you know, we get that laser beam onto the Nexus or the core or whatever you want to call it. And I'm looking at the difference in lasers right now. I'm like, okay, they got a couple shots more on the bottom one. So instead of going top and helping my team out, I'm trying to deduct who's down there. I see these three, and then I see Vala. So I'm like, okay, Anubarak is down there by himself. I can kill Anubarak. Late, it's late enough in the game where I do enough damage to take down the tank. Is it Was it worth it? I don't know. But uh, I do get him here, and uh, I figured since Murky's egg was up there, it'd be better if I came back because I could get the rest of this laser and then swoop my way top and help them out and Murky could go back in after dying in just a couple seconds and maybe pick somebody else off, which he did. He picked off uh, Illidan, 
and then he died, and then he's going to be back up there by the time I get up there, and we'll be able to... I don't know if we get the last couple shots on the laser or not, but I think we at least get... I tried to stop at the fountain first because I want to get some health back, uh, but the laser destroys it right before I get a chance. Murky gets him, and I just finish off Brightwing. So, we do get the last couple shots on the laser. It brings it to like 29%, I think, or 26%, maybe lower. I don't remember what it brings it to. 15%, okay. So, I go back because my health is low, and I'm looking and I'm like, uh, well, it's probably going to win the game with those catapults. And then I look back and, oh, game's over. So, this is the second video. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, leave a like. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.